And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 4. Two tropical cyclones are still active, just like they were yesterday, but a lot has changed since then. Nisaga made landfall in India earlier, uh, 12 hours ago or so, more than that actually, uh, as a Category 1, really intensified just before landfall, and Cristobal is moving just about inland over Mexico right now, delivering huge amounts of rain to the region. On day 4 of Atlantic hurricane season, there's also that area of interest that we marked near the Azores, which is dying off. Um, chances of tropical storm conditions going away completely. Day 21 in the eastern Pacific, it's still rather silent, no systems active, models depicting a very weak depression, but nothing much. Nisaga moving inland and weakening rapidly looks awful on satellite at the moment, uh, but we're giving it the benefit of the doubt, and X-92A over Sana in Yemen right now. Nothing active in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, the 2019-20 animations will be coming out in the next few weeks. So then, let's take a look at Tropical Storm Cristobal again. 45 miles per hour is what we're giving it right now, 997 millibars, peaked at 60 miles per hour earlier today, 18.4 north, 91.8 west, and a stage 4 on the CDPS for the Mexican provinces there. Uh, it's going to move off towards the north by the looks of things in the next 48 hours now by the looks of things here and then we'll move continuing over the Gulf really broadening out and we're not really sure we haven't quite got a handle on it yet whether it will be a tropical storm or not by the time it reaches the US or whether it will get so broad that it will just lose its tropical storm conditions um, uh, and weaken to a depression but it will be an extremely large one and could be more impactful than many tropical storms have been in the past so that's something to watch out for as we look at this satellite imagery you can see that uh, spin up there near the Azores um, and Cristobal of course which its influence continues to expand delivering some heavy weather to Florida right now it's still visible in the eastern Pacific as well you can even see its southern trail really extending all the way out into the intertropical convergence zone of the eastern Pacific uh, there's a very weak disturbance there on the left hand side which models GFS is depicting could develop a little bit but probably not enough to give it tropical depression status and not enough for us to mark either the western Pacific looking very quiet we've got that usual um, early season uh, cloudiness and rain making showers that exist uh, getting through Japan there the southern part of the country coming in from China um, and you can see a few flare ups further inland towards the west there as well out in the ocean pretty much nothing at all in the South Pacific there's quite a few flare ups over some of the islands the uh, Solomon Islands in particular uh, but nothing that's developing and that's also partially frontal there too and over in the Indian Ocean, you can see Nisaga just completely capitulated after it made landfall at about um, early afternoon local time in India yesterday as it is now. And the remnants of 92A still going in western Yemen. Sea surface temperatures remain very warm in the western, in the eastern Pacific, sorry, 30 degrees plus. In the Atlantic, where Cristobal is right now, temperatures dropping a little bit, but still around 28 Celsius, uh, met plenty of warmth for sustained cyclone development, although the more it does stall, the less chance it will have of regaining its uh, composure. The North Indian Ocean, very slight cooling down after Nisaga, not much though, still around 29-30 degrees Celsius. And in the uh, Philippine Sea and the um, South China Sea looking very warm there as well, 29s and 30s plus. Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this. You can see the Atlantic warmer than usual and so is the West Pack, the East Pack lagging behind there with that La Nina pattern. Tropical Storm Cristobal, there it is again on the floater imagery and this is how it's looked throughout the day on the geocolor visible and it hasn't moved very much at all has it look at that made landfall not so long ago um, at some point in the afternoon we're not exactly sure when to be honest uh, because it's been very slow to move still moving south we believe as well as we look at this imagery very early on in the day you'll see it on the infrared now it had extremely high cloud tops you just saw the uh, tail end of that at the beginning of the day there they've really weakened over the course of today and it's not very often you see those blues appear on this sandwich imagery and that's denoting very high cloud tops indeed i think that might be into the minus 80s or even minus 90s i'm not sure haven't looked 
uh, but you can see it's losing itself quite a bit as it's moving inland. Uh, the further it moves inland, the less of a chance that it will have to redevelop over the Gulf of Mexico, so keep watching. Um, National Hurricane Center, it's no real secret that they've been expecting it to weaken to a depression for quite a while, so do we, we expect that as well. Um, wind shear going to remain uh, low to average, but uh, it's the land interaction that's really going to put the handbrake on this storm. Sea surface temperatures not applicable right now as it's inland. Relative humidity though is very high, a very moist environment for this storm right now, which is one thing that's very well and truly in its favor. But if it does get extremely broad, like the models are suggesting, there's the HWRF. Not many tropical storm co conditions there. And for Nisaga moving inland there, it's not got very long at all to live either. Uh, looking back on June the 4th, 1995, uh, Tropical Storm Dana in the Western Pacific, just off the Philippine coast, and Allison, uh, the first hurricane of that rather interesting season and the first that heralded that very active period which some say were still in that was allison so those are the two storms we have right now and nothing else around the world so hopefully we'll have a little bit of quiet after cristobal goes um not to play it down uh, it is still a threat to the united states uh, and will be extremely large by the time it gets there whether it does or doesn't have tropical storm force winds it looks like the worst case scenarios are becoming less uh, likely Nisaga of course made landfall we give it around 75 knots 85 miles per hour when it made landfall earlier Ascat was finding 70 miles per hour on its own and that's very rare uh, and in the southern hemisphere there's the next names on the list there the southwest Indian Ocean names will refresh on July the 1st that's all for tonight. We'll be back again with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.